So this piece looks like it would be really easy to play. It's very short, it's only a few lines long, it doesn't really have notes that are far out of our normal everyday range. But the one thing that this piece really does have is it has some very bassoon specific slurs. When I say bassoon specific, I mean, you know, no slurs are really bassoon specific, but these really deal with some things that on a bassoon, we have to have some special techniques to be able to get out cleanly. The first thing, the first two notes are a D to a B above the staff. This is a prime candidate for flicking. If you don't know of flicking, I will tell you about flicking. Hopefully you learned it when you first started learning the bassoon and hopefully it's not new information. But if it is, we actually have two flick rules that happen all the time. The flick notes are A, these are all right on the top of the staff. Your A on the top of the staff, your B flat, your B natural, your C, and sometimes your D. All those notes right in that overblown range. When you're playing these notes, there are two times that you're going to flick. If you tongue one of these notes, you're going to flick it. And if you slur to one of these flick notes from a note that is whisper key F or below, you're going to flick the slurred flick note. So this first section of the piece, the D to the B, it's, a, it's not tongued, so you don't have to flick the B because it's tongued, but that first D is a note that is below your whisper key F. Therefore, we have to flick the slur to make it clean. If I don't flick the D to the B, I might get some cracks. I might not every time. Sometimes it might come out clean. Sometimes depending on your read that day, depending on the particular instrument you have, it might be clean. But we want it to be clean every time. We want the day of the audition to be clean. We want every time you play it to be clean so that you just eliminate all of those what ifs. Hopefully it's clean. So we need to flick. You're gonna start with your thumb on the whisper key. And a really good exercise is just to slur all the octaves because those all are gonna require flicking. Let's start on our low A and slur up to our A that's on the top of the staff, that flick note. For this, your A flick key is this long one that is one, two, three, the third one up above your whisper key. So you start with your thumb on the whisper key, play your low A. While you are playing your low A, this is the really important part, while you're playing your low A, lift your thumb and get it in place so that when you increase your air speed, you also just barely flick. I don't have to go all the way down. I just have to literally flick the key and get right off of it. Some people like to hold down these keys. They call them speaker keys. For me and my bassoon, it creates a different tone than the rest of the instrument. So I don't want to do it because it doesn't have that nice rich. It sounds a little more instead of so that's why I do not hold down those keys. You might have heard that before. Experiment for yourself, see which one sounds better. For me, I need to actually flick the key. So let's do this exercise. Let's start on our low A, slur up to our high A. You do it with me and watch my thumb and move your thumb when I do. Make sure, make sure that your thumb comes off of the whisper key while you're playing your low A and that the low A is still coming out. Let's do it again. You saw my thumb moving around while I was still playing a low A, right? You can use that time to kind of feel your way up. Also, don't look down at your thumb because it's going to change your embouchure, which also doesn't help. So take your time, feel up, and feel where that flick key is. If you need to try it on your own, keep practicing. All the flick practice you do is fantastic practice. It just makes you a better bassoon player. Now let's do it on the next octave. Let's do B flat to B flat. So start with your whisper key down, same thing, pick it up, but now we have a different flick key. 
the one above, the fourth one up, is our flick key for everything else. So we call this our A flick key, and we call this our everything else flick key. So we've got A and everything else. Let's do our octaves on B flat now. Now I've mentioned that when you play your low note, you need to lift off your whisper key and make, still, make sure that it's still playing that note. If it's not, that means that you might have too much of, you might be, your embouchure and your air might all be actually playing high notes instead of low notes. So if I were to do that, if it, if it jumps up right when I've taken my whisper key off, that means that everything's too high. I need deeper air. I need lower air. I need to really use the air from down here, really hot air, to make sure the note stays down. This is a big deal because it really affects your tuning, which we're about to get to. So while you play your B flat, let's do our B flat one more time. The next one is B natural. It uses the same everything else flick key, the fourth one up. Let's play a B natural slur. Do it again. C is next. Let's play our C octaves, making sure that first note is really low and deep. Try it again. Now we're going to do D next. You don't always have to do D. D is kind of far enough over the break that sometimes you might be able to get away with it. But if you are going to do it, if you have a fifth key up here, you can use that key for flicking D. The everything else flick key still works for it, though. Either one is fine. Okay, let's do this whole flicking exercise one more time. We're gonna go all through the octaves, so we're gonna play A, A, B flat, B flat, B, B, C, C, D, D, all the way up. When you're playing, make sure that when you take your whisper key off, the note is low, and then really listen and increase your air so that that next note, the higher octave, is in tune with the bottom octave. We're starting to listen to these kind of drone sounds the, to make sure that our pitch doesn't get high and sharp. Let's play through the whole exercise, and I'll kind of cue you with my bassoon to see if you can tell. Ready? Excellent. To get you ready to start playing this piece, this time really increase your air during the low note so that when you reach the top note, your air is already even more. It's already ready to play the top note, and then you just have a slight embouchure adjustment to play the top note. Let's do it again. Ready? <laughs> exercise a lot. Warm up with it every day. It's great just to get your air flowing, to get your tuning ears on. It's great to get everything started at the beginning of the day. Now I had mentioned that the other time that you flick is when you're articulating these notes. We have a few of these articulations. You can practice that also. I would practice it after the slurring so that you've really gotten used to where your air should be for the high flick notes. But when you are flicking, just practice just tonguing those flick notes. So we're going to tongue an A, then a B flat, then a B, then a C, then a D. Let's do it. Listen for clean attacks. You might hear... Do you hear that little 
junk at the beginning of the note, that's the purpose of flicking. So maybe flick a little harder. Maybe make sure your air is really firm. Let's try it again. Practice these flicks. They come up all over this piece, and if you're really good at flicking, if you really have this idea down, the whole piece will become much cleaner and much easier just from your warm-up.